Okay, so take the A train, our first chord progression in real jazz tune by the great Duke Ellington. Well, Billy Strayhorn wrote it for Duke Ellington and his orchestra. So let's just have a quick review of the chord changes. It's a typical chord chart, they call it, with the slashes. If you notice 4-4, four, four, that means four beats per measure, like we've been studying. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. So that's two measures of C. When you see a C chord, remember, that's a C major chord type. We discussed the C major seven. That would be my choice for the first chord of this tune, C major seven. Okay, C major. If you want, stay in open position. We also discussed that bar chord, the, that voicing just up there, the lower four strings. So that can be applicable too, or this C major seven. Although that's a little high on the fingerboard for the melody note, so either stay off of the melody note, like we discussed the three note chord, or down here. Okay, that would be my choice right there. Okay, for four beats, you could do the long short or the short, and then D7, so you have to anticipate, look at the chord, and there we go, there's your D7. Remember, we don't have to use that finger root note, or we can. Okay, for eight beats now, D minor seventh. G7, which is the same chord form on the low set of strings instead of the middle set of strings. Here's your fifth string bass root, D minor 7, G7, seven, and then back to C. Okay, and then one measure of G7 to get us to the second A section. This, if you notice, is 32 measures long. A lot of songs are 32 measures, as we've discussed. A, A, B, A form. A lot of songs are. This is A. The A section is repeated. So we use the G7 as the 5 chord, getting back to 1, the turnaround chord, which is also at the end of the song, and I'll explain it when we get there. Okay, second A. Same thing. Keep it simple. Anticipate the chord coming up. Like when you're on G7, look at the next chord, C. Okay. All right. And then the bridge goes to F. Okay. I would either get that F. Just look at one thing here. I would either get that F or... I would um, look at, oh, but that's not it. Wait a second here. I got it. Here we go. Let me just make sure they're right. Okay, so then we go to F, either here. Here, it's a little tough to get on the hands because that's the end of the neck, so I would move up to here. The fifth string, root F, the same as the C. So you're on C for two measures. Now bar 17, F, slide up, and you're right there for 16 beats, four measures. So have some time. Anticipate the D7, look ahead. So while I'm here, I'm thinking of the D7. There it is right there. And now same thing, I'm thinking D minor seventh, which we made that move in the A section in a different, right? That's D minor seventh, then the G7, C, and the last A, bar 25, C to D7, the last A section that is. Then D minor, G7, C. Now you see this turnaround chord and those two dots. That's a repeat sign, okay? Because you're going to play the song more than once, especially at a jam session. You don't just play the song once through. 
So um, the turnaround chord, I mentioned that before, is a G7. Let's consider the five chord, C being the one, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth step of the scale is the G7. Okay, so you may hear it referred to as the five chord of C. Little basic theory there just to interject. If you don't understand it yet, don't worry about it. Doesn't doesn't matter. Okay, and then you see at the top of the tune there are two more dots. That's where you go back to the beginning. Okay, and you keep playing through until the end, and you wouldn't hit the turnaround chord on the end. You would just end on the C chord, the one chord, the home chord, the root chord. Okay, so now with all that said, just a quick little review. Let's put on the track and we're going to play this tune at 80 beats per measure. Okay, I want you to remember that. Okay, you can use that long short. If you're still not up to playing rhythm yet, you will get there. You just got to practice a little bit every day. Just hit the chords. Make sure they're clean. All right, next chord, D7. Okay, now I'm looking at D minor 7 here. Okay, we're going to move the string root. G7. All right, so that's what you're going to do if you're, if you're not up to playing the rhythm yet. Okay, we're going to do this two times through, and then we'll just slowly raise the tempo. A one, two, three, four.
Okay, very good. So now, I just want to look at one thing here. Okay. Now we're going to up the tempo just a little bit. Again, you don't have to hit the, squeeze the neck too hard. Okay. And here we go. We'll go three times through now. Go up to 86. Now the middle chorus, instead of playing the rhythm, I'm going to maybe make some jazz rhythms. Okay, so you may notice me doing that. You can either continue playing the rhythm or you can experiment while I'm doing the rhythm four to the bar. And you can experiment with different uh, chord stabs or comping, you may hear it referred to, like a piano. So um, here we go. A one, two, three, four.
Okay, now for the last portion here, just want to have you play the root note of every chord. Here's C. You can also play it there. Two places that you can play a C. Okay, there's actually more places, but for now we're going to concentrate on the C, first fret B string, and the C note on the fifth fret G string. That's C. So D is next. Okay. That D or that D. So there's C to D. D again for D minor 7. The root stays the same. And then a G is right there. And it's also there. So we're looking at two places that you can play the same note. C, D, and G. Okay, so then the bridge goes to F. There's F, and there's F. Then to D, Either one, D to G, and you're back at the last A. So these are four notes we're looking at. The C, the root, the D, the second, second note of the C scale, D, again for minor, then G, and C, and then the F note in the bridge. So it's four notes. Okay, so let's play it through, right? On the downbeat of each measure. A uh, one, two, three, four. Next chorus, play one measure, one string, then the other C. D, D on the G string. So again, D, G, wherever you want to go here. The C, maybe the other G now. Then C. could add rhythms. Okay, and back to C. So now, in your practice time, go through the different notes. Go through some song books, look at the chords. No matter what it says, F major 11 with a 92nd in it, F major, right? And hit an F chord, the two F notes, I mean. Uh, and go around to different uh, song books like that and start note recognition, two for each tone. Okay, then you can add some rhythm. We're going to get into that next week. Start to make some melodic, I mean some rhythmic phrases, okay? Uh, let's go through one more time. I'll demonstrate that. 
there we go. Uh, one, two, uh, uh. Space. So that's kind of the beginning of improvisation in jazz, okay? And we're just dealing with root notes and getting used to making some rhythms and creating some of our own content, if you will. Okay, thank you.